Hey everybody, and welcome back to a new episode of Vanya's Homestead Journey. One of the ideas of this whole channel, why I started it, is because I want to share a little bit about the life in in Sweden and also the life in the forest and, and what you can do here and uh, what to do when you get lost. And one of the things I want to talk about in this video is uh, how to make a fire when it's wet. And there's a lot of ways and I've got more, I think I already have a video on this topic when it comes to birch uh, bark. Uh, maybe touch a little bit on that in this video also and otherwise go watch the other one. Uh, what we're looking for today is fat wood as they call it. And what happens if a pine tree especially, spruce also works but pine is way better. Um, when it dies, so falls by the wind or something like that. Um, all the resin that it usually, when, it, when the tree is alive, pumps through the tree, it goes down to the lowest point in that tree, slowly. But it gets holed up at different spots. So um, where branches are in the, uh, in the trunk, that is one of the spots that it, uh, it might get holed up. So if we look for it, and I'll explain later why we look for it, but if we look for that, we, what we do is we look up. And if you look up, you can see here, everything is straight up, right? So if something is off, off, uh, then you know that it's a tree that is half fallen down. You could also look on the ground, because the, the resin is way harder than the wood is. And that's the last thing that rots away. So. Uh, normally you want to avoid, when you when you make a fire, avoid uh, rotten wood a little bit uh, because it, it doesn't work so well. But in this case, the inner core of the tree sometimes turns into fat wood. And as I said, fat wood is the buildup of resin in the tree at certain points. So, uh, for example, if I walk here and I look up, and I don't, it's difficult to see on the video. This one here, there, uh, this, yeah. You see that it ends there. Um, and that's because it broke off. Now, that means that this tree, this little tree here, it's not such a big tree, this one, you see it ends there. So the top fell off. That means that the resin is starting to settle at some point. And that's the places we're looking for, where the, oh, sorry, where the resin has settled or is settling. Now I don't have the tools to cut this one down. And because it's still straight up this whole part, uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna find that much. So what do we do is we look for the part uh, that came down. You know, there's a part missing. So it's most likely that it is somewhere. Now here's something laying, but that's not it that's uh, a spruce there's something really rotten laying here also maybe we get lucky you see how soft it is right so now here's no fat wood in it you can see that this is all rotten so that's not interesting for us right now if that would have a hard core a hardcore hardcore then it would be interesting because that harder core would probably be there because of the resin buildup and that makes it fat wood, right? Now it would be really weird if there's not <laughs> another part of this tree somewhere around. Ah, okay, that's probably it. Yeah. Another one. Uh, otherwise, there's enough enough trees, of course. Yeah, here's a... Okay, yeah, this is the pine. So, this part is probably what came down from there. Which is pretty far away, huh? It fell like 10 meters. Or, no, yeah, something like that. It's, wow. Good. So, as I said, I'm going to flip the camera. And then we're going to see if we get lucky and find some fat wood and then what we can do with it, right? Okay, uh, one, two, three, flip. Let's 
go from it from the other side. Now I brought a little X. You remember that from the other video. This is my trusty X. So let's put that on there so we don't lose it. Okay, so what we are going for is probably this piece here. And that would be even better, but I'm not sure if I can reach it. But because the, it is at a slight angle, that means the resin goes down there and it stops at those kind of points. So that's where we're gonna chop and see if we can find fat boot. That doesn't look like it. No. You can... It's a very distinct smell. It smells like turpentine. Uh, once it turns into fat wood. So, this is not it. I'm gonna check some other ones. And see if we uh, get lucky. On some other branches. Yeah, you can already see the difference in color. You see that? The core of it is way more pink, uh, orangey, red. And it smells so nice. This is such a nice smell. This is starting uh, fat wood. It's not great, but I'm gonna take it anyway. Something else, uh, talking about jackpot that I found. Look at this. That is the skull of a little deer. Oh, that's awesome. Look at the brain, like where it comes together. Oh, this is so cool. The little antlers are still on it. Yeah. What? <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> There's a lot more bones here. I put that there. I know this. Look at this. This bone here. And there, and look at jaw. That is awesome. Now we have a little family of wolves living around here, or we don't know if it's a family yet, but we know there's a there's a, a pair. Uh, we also have big cats around here quite a lot i've been told but you know, never see them uh, same goes for the wolves by the way i've never seen them uh, i've seen the tracks in the snow but that's it uh, but big cats also and they can take it down like a little deer like this so could be cats you know pretty cool but something died here and well i don't know i'm no expert but it's I don't know, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna take those. Yep. Focus, Mark. You're trying to make a video about fat wood. Stay focused. <laughs> don't, don't get distracted by forest treasures everywhere. Like little skulls and bones. Let's keep looking for fat wood. Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm distracted again. I'm gonna put my skull down in my bag because I wanna show you something else, which is really cool. I found it here. And this is um, 
licorice fern and licorice as in the candy licorice and that's exactly what it tastes like so when you're in the forest and the things that i'm showing you to eat here and what you can eat and cannot eat be a little bit careful don't just go in the forest and take it and do it yourself also uh this is a little disclaimer this but um i tell it on tours also because something that works here in the forest doesn't mean it works the same in your forest at home even though the plant looks the same uh, it might not be the exact same compounds in the ground or something else that that changes the chemical composure that uh, might make it poisonous so be careful what you eat in the forest that being said this video was about to be a, was planned to be about fat wood but it's now about <laughs> us being in the forest and me getting over enthusiastic about everything i see um this is a liquor licorice fern as i said and i'll flip the camera so you can see it better this little plant you can recognize it by it looks like a fern on this side and it grows on rocks obviously in this quantities i don't see it so much so uh this is this is quite rare that's why it caught my eye uh distinguishable by little seeds looking you see those things on the back so if it doesn't have that it's not it don't touch it because uh, in certain states a fern a normal fern can be uh, or is very poisonous so don't please don't do that so what you do because it grows on rocks, you see, it's like a mat laying on it, you see? Moss doesn't have roots, so it just lays on there. Very delicate, beautiful little plant that I can make a whole video about. Uh, I just read a whole book about moss and it's sidetrack again. Don't, let's not do this. Uh, talking about this one, let's dig in here a little bit. And then what we see here, is it turning into a thicker root? You see that? Yeah. You can see that. Okay, I'm gonna take a small piece. I'm gonna flip the camera again so you can see uh, what to do with it. So, I feel that we're getting rain, so I, maybe I should head home soon, but... Okay, so you take this off. We only need the, the root. And the root is has a, like a layer over it that is really it comes off really easy like a like a little jacket on it so you can take that off and maybe i don't know if you have it in other countries probably uh, we we call it soothout in dutch sweet wood literally translated it, probably not right but uh, you get the point you probably can buy it in a candy store where you're from also and maybe not even anymore but when i was a kid you could at least this is how it looks on the inside. Let me see if I can focus it. Uh, no, a little bit. And uh, the Native Americans used to, we know that they used it as a cough syrup. So they chewed on it and then swallowed the sap that comes out, uh, your saliva. And uh, that makes a really good cough syrup. And if you have a sore throat, so it works really well for that. It tastes delicious. It tastes like soothout as we call it in Dutch. Um, it's really strong. Mm. Cool. I'm not a big fan of the taste, but you can, but it it tastes like it's good for coughing. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this. Looking on the ground here, I'm gonna flip the camera again. Sorry. So, looking on the ground, look, everything that is green here is blueberry plant. Look at this. Now, I don't know what the price is in the Netherlands at the moment or in the US or wherever you're looking from, but here in Sweden it's like 50 crowns for a little box. Uh, and. I know that in the Netherlands you also pay like 5 euros for a little little box like that and they grow here for free, you know? And they're really good. My my hands are still purple from the last time I <laughs> I picked them, but uh, they're really good at the moment. I'm 
by the way, we know a couple of things about blueberries. First of all, it's not a good survival food. Well, in a way it is, because it's good for the morale. I've been lost in the forest for a day once, deliberately. Well, it started out as a deliberate lost in the forest, but it made some... Well, it invoked some heavy panic emotions on me at some point, but I, because I didn't have any water or, and stuff like that left, and I didn't expect it to be like that. So, um, yeah, and after a couple of hours, you kind of... You kind of want to go home, you know, if, you, if you're really lost. And um, then it's a very good survival food because it gives you some sweetness, it gives you some moist, some, um, and it raises your morale a little bit. It, it keeps you going. Now, that being said, it doesn't have much benefit calorie-wise because you, it takes calories to pick them, which is mentally a very good thing to do. They taste really good, they're sweet, but... They are calorie neutral, which means that it takes your body about the same amount of calories to process them as they um, yield. Is that a way to say it? I don't know. But you get as much calories from it as it takes, pretty much. So, yeah, they're pretty much useless when it comes to calories. They do have a lot of antioxidants in it. And the funny thing is, we always focus on the berries, but I was just talking to Josephine at home. Uh, for for example, strawberries has more, I believe, vitamins, but I'm not sure what is in strawberries. I'm not so uh, well known with strawberries. Um, but in the leaves, then they do have in the strawberry itself. And the same goes for blueberries. The berry itself uh, is loaded with antioxidants, but the little leaves are having more antioxidants then the berries itself, the berries taste way better, of course, but you can make a tea out of it. Or just stew on it and then spit it when you're done. Looks a bit gross, but um, then you get all the nutrients and your saliva takes out whatever you need. Not nutrients, antioxidants. And uh, you spit out the rest because it just doesn't taste really good. Okay, another distraction. Let's keep our walk going for uh, for fat wood. Now, as you see, I can talk for a hundred hours in the forest and that's not because, um, because of me, but that's because there's so much in the forest that you can eat and you can take and you can do stuff with. It's such a rich place. And now it's July. So that means sup the supermarket is open, you know. We got everything here. We got heather growing. You can eat the little leaves. I can show you some, some time a trick to harvest them easy. There's, there's stuff around everywhere. There's medicine. Uh, the moss here is, is a medicine. It's a, um, an antiseptic and an antibacterial function if you have the right moss. So that means that you can put it on a wound and it even has an anticoagulant, anticoagulant in Dutch, so a blood stolen uh, properties. So that means it works as a sponge. Ah, fuck it, I'm gonna show you. Uh, you're watching this because you like the forest probably, so I might as well show you. We'll talk about fat wood when we get back. I have it at home. This kind of moss, I'll flip it. This kind of moss, so what you do is you take a patch. I'm a little bit careful because I don't want to take so much. But this is this kind of moss. And let's say you cut yourself in the leg, right? All you do is put the moss on and then bind it with something. Now, if you hit an artery, you might as well sit on the rock and look into the distance and enjoy the view because, well, you're done for. Uh, you could treat it in the wilderness, but it's almost impossible. If you don't have help in in a really short time, then you're you're, you're done for. But apart from that, if you uh, have a cut and you're bleeding heavily, you put this on, you leave it on, and the blood itself activates the properties that you want. Because uh, moss, as you see, if it's dry, this is quite dry, so it gets a little bit yellow. 
but it can turn back to green in a day. It can take up to more than 90% of its, its weight in uh, moist and keep that moist. Which is important for a whole lot of reasons that I'm not talking about right now. But you put it on the wound, you leave it there. It stops the bleeding, it acts like a sponge, so it sucks out the dirt and the, uh, well, whatever is in there. And it kills the bacteria, neutralizes the bacteria. So um, this stuff is an amazing first aid that the forest well, puts everywhere. So it's everywhere. I'm gonna put it back, so. Yeah, like I never was here, huh? <laughs> okay, let's keep going, people. Take my skull. Yep. I uh, just had a tree, a pine tree that fell down at uh, at my our own uh, land. So I'm gonna walk back there. I showed you where you can find it. So net, now let's see what you can do with it. And it's that was a little bit of bigger tree, so it's bigger chunks. So it, it's, it's better to see it that way on uh, on camera. Uh, so I'm heading back there. I'm almost there because I'm, it's right, well right around the corner here. So and Josephine's gonna get go crazy if she sees this. She really likes those things because she's just as weird as I am. I'm gonna, I'm back home. So I'm gonna go into the woodshed, because there I have a lot of pieces, and a lot of pieces of fat wood also. So let's do that. And as you can see, if you go into the forest with me, I'm trying to find fat wood. But everything is so interesting to me in here. Uh, I hope it is interesting to you too. Uh, and I hope you've seen how you can start a fire with fat wood. That also works in, uh, in the rain, as I said. Apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this video because I cannot help myself when I'm around here in the forest uh, to stop at everything that I see because it is genius. It is just genius. And I love it. So I hope you enjoyed it too. And uh, I hope next week I have a little bit more of a structured video for you again with a little less chaos, but hopefully with the same enthusiasm as <laughs> this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah.